What's good, everybody? What's good? What's good? What's good? God bless you guys in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to bring this word to you today because this word right here will help many of you people not become sad, mad, and looking bad, and bitter, angry, offended, <laughs> and then blaming other people when it's God. Ah, I want to talk about this today because a lot of times Christians, they're guilty where you begin to blame other people and then accuse other people when in reality, how do you not know it wasn't God that did that? How do you not know that it wasn't God that disrupted that? How do you not know that it wasn't God? See, and a lot of times Christians, they get caught up in this trap and then they go to cursing what God broke up. Then they go to curse and what God separated. Then they go to curse and what God stopped. Then they go to curse and what God closed the door on. Then they go to curse and what God put his hand in to reroute you, to get you to where it is he wanted you to go all along. See, a lot of times Christians, especially uh, uh, sometimes a, a lot of leaders, they get stuck in this and then they get offended. Um, and a lot of times... What people need to realize and understand is that when, when God steps in and when God closes a door or God says done, God is going to shut it down however he sees fit. See, but we need to get out of our, our carnal human reasoning reality to understand and realize that God is going to do what he sees fit. God is going to do what he wants to do to get you to where he, where he wants you to be, what he wants you to do. And God is going to do for you. God is got, God. <laughs> See, this is why a lot of people get in their feelings, y'all. This is why people get offended at people. This is why they get mad at people, not even understanding and realize that sometimes it's God that will shut it down. Sometimes it's God that will say done, no mas. Yeah, but Christians don't believe that. That's why they get mad, they get offended, and then they go talking about somebody behind their back, and, and, and that's why. Uh, uh, they, and, and then they ruin good relationships. What if God had to separate them for a season so that in another season He brings them back, better than ever? See, Chris. I wonder sometimes, do leaders truly trust the process and the timing of the Lord? Do you not know that everything is not going to work out according to your plan? Do you not realize and understand that God is going to do what he sees fit, regardless of what it is and how it is we perceive it's all going to work out or think it's going to come or think God God would not do that. God wouldn't separate that. God wouldn't close that door. Oh, I, I beg to differ. God will shut things down purposely. Especially, he knows you better than you. He knows what is best for you. He knows where he's sending you. And he knows when a season and a time and a moment is done. But if people stay stuck in their feelings, what they end up doing is cursing God. When it, Watch this. If it was God that shut it down, and then you become offended at a person because of what it is that transpired and took place, you now are cursing God, mad at a person, not even realizing and understanding that it was God that shut the door. It was God that closed it down. It was God that said, I'm done. I'm done with this season. I'm done with this moment. I need to bring you over here. <laughs> okay, God bless you, Lindsay. God bless in Jesus' name. God bless you, Gwen. See, Christians don't believe that God won't, God won't do these things. How do you not know it wasn't God that shut it down? How do you not know that it wasn't God that intervened and says, you know what? I'm going to pull you up and out of here and I'm going to bring you over here, but I'm going to bring you back in another season. But that person will never come back in another season because now there is now there's a wedge and a divide because that person got mad because you left. Ah, oh, this happens all the time in ministry, y'all. How do you not know? That's why you can't curse what it is that God does and you don't know the why. You cannot try to control what it is that is out of your control that God will do for a reason. 
You have no idea what this person or what you need done in your life to bring you to where it is God is wanting to lead you to and do in your life to bring about a beautiful blessing all oh, and do in you and for you what it is you would have never expected and or seen. See, some of you, sometimes God needs to shut the door because he knows you won't go on your own accord. <laughs> Woo! See, sometimes God needs to step in and intervene because he knows you won't move. God sometimes needs to step in because he knows you're comfortable with where you're at. See, God don't want you comfortable. He wants you faithful. God don't, God is not, he's not worried about your comfortability. What he's worried about is your faithful ability to remain obedient to the call and the assignment and the task at hand of everything that he's calling and telling you to do. Obedience is way better than the sacrifice. Way better, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you though. There will be a sacrifice in it because you're going to have to lay something down and or shut the door or open the door and step into something new. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because a lot of times, y'all, you can't get mad at people. This is what I'm trying to say, because here's the thing. How do you not know it wasn't the Lord? <laughs> How do you not know God is not shutting the door to move you to a different location or to take you to a different spot or to connect you with a different people that is going to be a blessing to your life and vice versa? How do you not know God is not in it to disrupt it because he knows what's best for you and he knows that season is done? Do you not realize and understand, y'all, God does not work according to our plans and our purpose and our will. What he works towards is his plan, his purpose, and his will. And sometimes his will, his plan, and his purpose is not going to be what you want to do. It's not going to be what it is that well, I feel and I'm excited. No, a lot of times when God speaks to you, you're not, when God truly calls you to something, you're not going to feel like doing it. That's why it kind of bothers me and it rubs me the wrong way when people, they say, well, now I'm called to this and, and they say they're super excited. No, that, that may be an emotional high or they're driven to, to that because a lot of times, and that's why I always tell people, are you sure you want God to speak to you? Because if God truly speaks to you, he's going to hold you accountable to what he says. I want to hear God's voice. Are you, sure? Are you sure you really want to hear God's voice? Because if you really want to hear God's voice, you're going to be held accountable to what he speaks and says concerning you. And are you willing to be obedient to what he speaks and says? And are you ready to hear what he wants to say? <laughs> Hallelujah, because people think that God is just going to come and sit down and, and, and have a cup of cup of tea and, and, and bake you a cake and sit down and, and, and wipe the, the, the frosting off of your cheek. When in reality, he might come to you and ask of you or, or inquire or require from you something that you don't want to do. <laughs> that's why encounters that's why people who say they have encounters with Jesus but there's no but there's no true transformation or there's no evidence of that encounter what it is they say they had they they can't sell me on it I can always tell a person who has a true encounter with Jesus because there's evidence of that reality based upon the transformation and also the miracle and the obedience and also a new direction and the path that they now take. Whew. So brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, one of the things that Christians need to learn and understand that there's times and seasons when God will step in and intervene. Not because that person's bad, not because that person's evil. No, sometimes they can't go with where you're going. Sometimes that season and that time you being connected there is done. It's over. 
it's done and it's over and that's okay you one of the things that leaders ah oh, leaders have to grow and understand this reality there's gonna come a time and a moment and a season you can't keep everybody but you can remain you can remain connected as family with everybody that crossed your path but you can't get bitter and mad when they leave you can't get bitter and mad when it's time to go in a different direction and allow the Lord to do with your life what it is he wants to do. But we get we get in our feelings and we get mad and we get sad and looking bad and crazy. And then all of a sudden people begin to speak against what it is that God came in and shut down. But yet we think or we we think and we accuse the person. Not even understanding and realizing that it was God that shut the door. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Watch this. Watch. This is crazy. Now, watch. I want for you guys to think about this. So when Moses was saying, let my people go, the Bible said God hardened Moses. Uh, God har hardened um, Pharaoh's heart. Moses said, to Pharaoh, let my people go, but Pharaoh could not even do that because God had hardened his heart. Hmm. So God was in it. God. See, this is why sometimes people say, well, God won't force his will. God won't force his will. Oh, yes, he will. When God wants to do something, he can and he will if he wants to. Based upon what it is that is at hand. And people, sometimes they get so churchy. They get so churchy and, and they get so Christianese. Oh, God won't force his will or his hand. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> God will force his hand and God will force his will for his will to be accomplished and done. So brothers and sisters, you never know. You may think it was the person just wanting to up and leave. How do you not know that God needs for them to go so that, so that another can come? How do you not know that, that, that they are a seed sown and which is why you have to bless people. You have to bless them. Now, there's going to be some people that are going to remain with you for the long haul, that are going to walk with you for the long haul and be with you for the long haul in everything that God's called you to. But there's going to be some people that are going to come your way that are going to be there for a season. And you got to be okay with that. You have to be okay with that. You have to prepare your heart for that. And you have to be willing to bless them when that time comes. You can't curse them when God steps in, begins to shut the door, and he begins to tell you the season is up. Because here's the thing, when the season is up, he'll make it uncomfortable for both of you all. I said when the season and the time is up, he will make it uncomfortable for you and them. How many of you all, and for those that tune in on the replay, you can put in here, amen or ouch. How many of you all know that God was calling you to shut the door on something and you didn't do it and the Lord made it uncomfortable for you? See, there's times, brothers and sisters, when the conviction of the Holy Ghost, not just for sin, but also for your obedience to do and to head towards where it is he's calling and requiring of you to do. See, brothers and sisters, a lot of times people think, no, I don't, well, I don't get conviction like that, brother. Well, well, are you even obedient to the Father and the will of the Lord? Are you even, <laughs> are you even in the faith? My God, my God, what do you mean you don't get no conviction of the Holy Ghost? What do you mean you're not led of the Spirit? Because the Bible says those who are led of the Spirit of God, those are the sons and the daughters of God. Those are the ones that are of my Spirit. How? Because there'll be evidence of the lifestyle and the realities of what they live. And a lot of times, brothers and sisters, you have to be okay 
with people coming and going in your life. And watch this. I had to learn this. I had to be okay. I learned this. It didn't come naturally and it didn't come. But but I learned over the years that I become okay with people using me for the gift of God in me because they don't sometimes they don't know who they are, but my life is submitted to Christ and I'm secure in my sonship in my identity and whether people want to bless whether people want to be connected to me or or use me it don't matter I'm speak why because I'm always on assignment because no matter where I go I'm going to be a blessing regardless whether that person is just using me for the gift that God upon me it don't matter I'm still going to love them and bless them. And even if they do want to use me, praise the Lord. But even if they do want to receive me and walk with me, praise the Lord. But either way, it don't change my assignment. It doesn't change why it is I'm coming that way. It doesn't change who they are and, and, my, and my love relationship with them. Because here's the thing. We are called to be used. You got to be comfortable with being used, y'all. See, see, it took me a while to get to this reality. It took me years because in my early years, man, it hurt. I got in my feelings. I got mad. You know what I mean? Uh, who do they think they are? I, I you know, uh, and, and then you could become bitter. You could become of, offended. See, but I don't live that way no more. I live knowing with my mindset now, it don't matter if you want to use me use me but either way god's gonna get glory <laughs> come on see you can use me that's okay because it doesn't change who i am see because i'm so secured in my sonship in my identity it doesn't move me whether you do or you don't because if you want to use me i'm okay with that because i'm gonna see god move regardless See, because whether your heart is right or not, it doesn't change who I am in Christ. And in the process thereof, there's going to be many people that are going to receive a miracle. There's going to be many people that are going to be impacted. There's going to be many people that are going to be touched by the power of Jesus Christ. <sighs> See, I had to learn the hard way, y'all. See, and now I live my life. It doesn't matter. If you want to use me, I'm okay with that. Hear me, y'all. Hear me. I'm okay with being used. If you want to use me, I'm, a, I'm cool with that. I'm, I, I'm okay with that. Why? Because my life is no longer my own. See, because I'm here on assignment to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. And it's okay. But that didn't come easy. <laughs> I didn't. I, hey, what's going on, Brian? Bless you. Uh, blessings, bro. See, I didn't get here overnight and I didn't learn that the easy way. Some of the things that I learned, I learned the hard way. I learned through some pain. I learned through some disappointments. I learned through some trials and tribulations and I learned through some, you know, things that came my way. But whereas now I realize if people want to use me, praise the Lord. If people want to be a blessing and walk with me, praise the Lord. But either way, it don't change the assignment of God upon my life. Because no matter what, I'm still going to do what God called me to do. I'm still going to love people. I'm still going to love those. Even if they do use me, that don't matter. I'm still going to be available. How many times you want to use me? I'm okay with that. You want to use the gift? Okay. Come on, praise God. Let, let, let's have at it because, be, because Jesus is going to get glory, period. <laughs> so I'm okay with people using me. It's okay. It's okay. You know what's crazy? So uh, there's a scene in the movie, uh, The Jesus Revolution, right? And there's a scene where Lonnie Frisbee said, you know, like, you know, people use me. And when, they, and when they're done with me, they throw me away. And that ministered to me. I remember when that movie came out because that was in those moments when I was growing uh, and also, too, gaining and walking in this revelation that I now live in as, the, as a reality. Because it's true. Sometimes even in ministry, there's people that will use you for the gift. 
There was there's people that will use you for what God's doing in your life, especially when miracle signs and wonders are flowing, especially when there's evidence of God's hand upon you and people are being blessed by your ministry. But here's the thing. Let them use you. Let them use you because why? Because there's people that are out there that are going to be so blessed. That's why now I don't hear me, y'all. I don't live being offended. I don't live accusing people or why didn't this work or why did they leave or why didn't this work out? Why aren't they not still walking? Why are we not doing this together? Why are we not? No, no, no. I live now with an open heart saying within my heart and within, within my life, no, I'm going to bring Jesus Christ glory in it and through it all. Whether people use me, whether they don't, <laughs> whether they want, whether, whether they want to, whether they want to walk in the glory and bring glory to the name of Jesus. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Brian. Amen, brother. Amen. What's going on, primo? What's going on, Rico? God bless. God bless cuz. Love you, bro. And, and hear me, y'all. Like I said, I didn't learn this overnight. I didn't learn this in a month or in a year. No, I learned this over time. And you learn this through God breaking you down. See, because a lot of times, some of the things that we go through is God trying to get out of you. Some of the things that we endure is God trying to remove from your life so that that way nothing has a hold on you. No, has nothing has a hold on your life no more. Amen. Come on, man, because here's the thing, because there's going to be certain ministers that you once were cool with that may talk about you. But here's the thing. You can't become bitter and mad because here's one of the things that I'll always say, whether they say or talk about you or, or, or even turn their back on you, whenever they call me again or they ask for my help, I'm going to be right there. <laughs> I'm going to be right there. You best believe them. Come on. Come on. Let's do this. Don't hey, don't even worry about asking for forgiveness. I forgive you already. This is not about me and my feelings. This is about bringing glory to the name of Jesus. Come on, man. Let, let, let's let's forget about all that. Let's go win souls. Let's go see. Let's go see bodies and lives healed and restored by the power of Jesus Christ. Don't worry about why it fell apart, why it didn't work. Don't worry about none of that. Let's just go and do the work of the ministry so that the lives and the hearts of God's people can be blessed by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth so that the healing power of Jesus can move upon the souls. Because brothers and sisters, if you don't deal with that, y'all, because a lot of times, like I said, how do you not know that it wasn't God that shut that door? You think it was them, but how do you not know it's how do you not know it wasn't the Lord? <laughs> because when God wants to get you to where he where it is he wants you to be, oh, he will step in. And if you won't go willingly, if you won't go willingly, he will make sure. He will make sure to stir things up. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Come on, can I get a witness? How many of you all know that if you don't go and do what God told you to do, how do you, how many of you all, can I get a witness somebody? Don't leave me out here alone. How many of you all know he'll make things uncomfortable for you? He'll grieve your, he'll grieve your soul to the core. And a lot of times, sometimes people think, sometimes people think, oh, I'm under attack, not even understanding. It's not an attack. It's grieving the Holy Ghost. And you can't resist the Holy Spirit. You can't bind the Holy Ghost. See, you can cast out a devil and remove the enemy and attack from your life. But you can't bind disobedience, especially when the Spirit of the Lord is calling and telling you to go and to do and to be somewhere or to be obedient to what it is he's requiring of your life for him to do. Oh, uh, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, and, and based upon what it is that God's called you, and I know everyone's different. But based upon what God's called you to do, oh, I, I promise you he'll step in. See, people think, oh, God would never force his will. God would never force his will upon anybody. 
You could think that if you want to. <laughs> you can think that if you want to. <sighs> Walk with the Lord long enough and you'll find out. And watch and see. See, you think you think the devil's attacks are heavy? Oh, the conviction of the Holy Ghost is way worse. When you get that grieving deep down in your soul, you can't shake that. You can't shake the grieving of the Holy Spirit. Especially when we know we're being disobedient. You might as well throw in the you might as well throw up that white flag quick. Because that heaviness and sometimes that weight of what it is that the Lord is trying to get you to, to, to be obedient to, it won't leave until you obey. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, this is this is gonna be a this is gonna be a blessing and a word for somebody. I'm telling you all. This is why you can't get disappointed. You can't ministers, hear me, y'all. Ministers, you can't get bad when people come and go, y'all. Hear me. Like I said. People are going to do what they want to do, but a lot of times God will shut things down himself purposely because there's a reason for it. Because God sees the longevity and down the road further than what we see. That's what we can't, dis we can't be disappointed, y'all. We can't be mad at that person. We can't be mad at that man or that woman. We can't be mad at them because here's the thing. This is why we must we must do ministry with an open door policy always and forever. We can never have an offense or be or 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 or, or just to shut somebody out completely and entirely because how do you not know God won't test you and me to bring them back to see to see whether or not we'll receive them. Come on somebody. You don't know if God won't bring them back. You won't know if God won't if God don't want to uh, uh, move again in a different realm in a different way. Come on, there's a lot that we can learn from not being offended and trusting the plan of the Lord. Because no matter who comes and no matter who goes, you gotta bless them when they go and bless them when they come. Just live live your heart with an open door policy. If you want to come, cool. If you want to leave, cool. I love you regardless. I'm still going to be right here. And if you need me and you want to use me, I'm still going to be available for you. You can use me if you want to. That's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with being used, y'all. See, Christians, they get in their feelings and that's why a lot of Christians become offended. I'm okay with being used. <sighs> because that's what we're called to do. We're called to be used by God. Watch this. How many of us all have said, God, here I am. Send me. Use me, Lord. Do we understand what we're praying and saying when we say that? Use me, Lord, because at the expense of being used by God, you're going to be used by people and you have to become okay with that. Because God will use you. But you have to become and grow strong skin, tough skin, and, a, and toughen your soul because you can't get emotional because if you get emotional, then the devil will have at it with you. The devil is just waiting. Oh, man, I, I, I can't wait to I can't wait to terrorize them when they get offended at that brother, at that woman that God said it's over and it's done. See, a lot of times people open themselves up for attacks from, from the enemy because they all of a sudden begin to get offended at a man or a woman of God that the Lord shut the door on, but they thought it was the person. <laughs> What's happening, Brian? Come on, somebody. They thought, they thought it was the person. Not understanding it was God that said, done. I got to I got to shut the door in this season. I need them over here and I need you over here. I need you doing this. You may not understand and it might hurt you for a moment, but you have to understand that God has a plan. And sometimes God's plan, God's way and God's will will not line up with ours. And if we think that if we think that everything is going to work out as planned, we got another thing coming. If you think everything's going to work out the way you want it, you got another thing coming. 
And this is what preachers don't talk about. This is what they don't prepare you for is there's going to be surprises. There's going to be moments when you're going to be in a situation in an area of your life and you say, my God, how did I get here? God is God's plan got you there. God's purpose and your obedience and your yes and your prayer. God, here I am. Send me. Oh, watch this, y'all. This is why you need to be careful with what you say, because when you begin to pray that way, get ready for God to begin to send you. Get ready for God to begin to shut things down and open things up for you. And watch this. This is why a lot of times the turbulence comes both the good and the bad as transition begins to take place. But how do you know? See, a lot of the stuff that, that, that Christians blame the devil on sometimes is God. It's sometimes God trying to get you to where it is. He wants you to be. Sometimes it's the Lord that is stepping in. Sometimes it's the Lord. I'm not talking about demonic attacks like the Lord is sending devils your way. I'm not saying that. But sometimes the Lord will make that season or make you uncomfortable with your comfortability. And he will when he wants to use you and you've been praying and desiring for God to use you mightily. And you've been asking the Lord, you want to be used more. You want to be a blessing to God's people. You want God to shine through your life. Be careful what you pray. That's all I got to say. Be careful what you pray. Because what you pray, God's going to take you up on it. God's going to take you up on it. What you pray, God is going to take you at your word. Because the true reality is this. That that true heart cry is real. Because it comes from your spirit man within. But your flesh and your soul will wrestle with that reality because when God begins to step in and take control and begins to shut things down and, and shake things up and begin to send you in that path and in that direction of what you prayed, oh, your flesh and your soul ain't going to like it. Your flesh and your soul is going to think it's a demonic attack. Your flesh and your soul is going to think, oh my God, the, I'm, a, I'm under attack. I need to call the prayer line. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need to get on the main line. I need to get on the main line and call the prayer line because I need them to pray for me because the devil is after me. When the reality is your prayer that got you there. It was your prayer that got you there because you were asking of the Lord to send you and to use you mightily for an outpouring of his spirit upon your life to be utilized to bring his name glory. Come on, somebody. See, this is the type of stuff we don't talk about in the church today, because let me tell you, God will shake, rattle and roll some things and position you and get you to where it is he wants you to be. <laughs> uh, but you got to live with a mindset and a heart and a soul. It's OK to be used. It's OK to let people use you. Let people use you for God's glory. Because remember, it's not about them. It's not about you. It's about bringing glory to the name. And you're going to learn it one way or the other. You're going to learn it either in the fire. You're going to learn it either by revelation or situation. The choice is yours. See, a lot of you, you're going to tune into this word and say, but I don't want people to use me. That hurts my feelings, brother. I don't want people just to be using me. Well, here's the thing. You ask God to use you. People are going to use you and you got to be okay with that. You got to settle that in your heart early. See, we don't talk about this type of stuff on the platform, y'all. A lot of a lot of pastors don't even talk about this reality. You want to know why is because a lot of them are still bitter and mad and offended at all those people that left. They don't want to bring up this topic and understand how do you know it wasn't God that told them to go. You don't know what God said. You don't know what God has in store because there's times when brothers and sisters hear me. 
There's going to be people that are going to come into your life momentarily. There's going to be people that are going to come into your life for a season. And there's going to be people that are going to come in your, into your life for longevity. To walk it all out with you. But it's not always going to be that way. But you have to live with your heart as an open door policy. <laughs> that whether you come or whether you go, it don't matter. I love you anyway. And here's the thing. If you call me, I'm going to be right here. If you want to use me, use me. Because I don't live for me. I don't live for them. I live to bring the name of Jesus Christ glory. Amen. And that's the real deal, Holyfield. <laughs> that's the real deal, Holyfield, y'all. For real, for real, for real. Amen. I love you all in the name of Jesus. So remember, when you pray that dangerous prayer, God use me, get ready. Because not only did God hear that prayer, but God is going to send you to be used, but people are going to use you. But you have to be okay with that. You have to grow thick skin. You have to be okay in your soul. You have to be confident and secure in your sonship and in your identity. Because if you let those things move you, those things will make you bitter. They'll make you offended. They'll get you mad. And like I said, did I get here overnight? Did I learn this overnight? Oh, no, 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 no. It took some going through. It took some walking through. It took some. I'm one of those people where I learned the hard way. See, I'm. <laughs> See, I'm kind of knuckleheaded like that. I'm one of those individuals where, where I learned the best the hard way, if the truth be told. I've always been like that. But I learn. See, I learn. But one of the beautiful things is this, y'all. Is that when God begins to, for real, make your heart so available in such a way as this, you understand that every time you go and if whether people want to use you or, or whether they love you or not, it don't matter because you're not there. Specific, you're not there for them. Primarily, you, you're there because you ask God through your prayer. Here I am, Lord, send me. And that prayer and you say, God, use me. God's going to use you. But so will people. And you have to be OK with that. You have to be okay with that because if you become bitter, if you get offended, if you become easily offended, you're not going to be prepared and ready for the more that God wants to send you to. And you have to love people because sometimes they, they may not, they may not have this revelation yet. They may not be there in their hearts yet, but it doesn't mean that God won't bring it to their awareness down the road. And then when God does bring it to their remembrance and the Lord begins to soften their heart, guess what they're going to do? They're going to call you up. Hey, hey, bro. Hey, sis. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we had a falling out. I'm sorry that, you know, that we didn't see eye to eye in that season that we were walking together. I'm sorry that, you know, that I used you. I'm sorry that I, that I slandered your name. I'm sorry that, I'm sorry that we broke up or, or, or that, or that uh, we stopped doing ministry in the way that we did. Man, I'm sorry, bro. And here's the thing. Once you come to this reality and you live from this, this mindset, even once they call you, here's the thing. Hey, don't worry about it. Come on. Forget about it. I've already forgiven you. <laughs> I've already forgiven you. Come on, man. Let's go lay hands upon people. Let's go. Let's go preach Jesus. Let's go tell people about the goodness of God. And let's go tell people, stop living bitter, offended, and sad, mad, and looking bad. And start living, loving God's people. Because if you want to be used... God is going to use you. But if you want to be used, so will people. You have to be okay with that. And I know this isn't the type of sermon that you're not going to hear most preachers talk about. 
you're not going to hear a topic like this brought up in most places, especially even on social media. You want to know why is because people are still people are still consumed in their feelings and they're still mad at minister so and so they're still they're still mad at bishop they're still mad at apostle they're still mad at that prophet they're still mad at pastor so and so <laughs> you got to get that out of your heart you got to deal with it because because if you don't deal with it now down the road it's going to surface again see the lord will always bring things to the surface so that we can deal with these things so that we know they're there. See, and we, we must ask ourselves, what is that? Why am I mad? Why am I offended? Why am I disappointed? When I asked the Lord to use me, I never said in my way. I said, Lord, have your way. Come on, somebody. I said, Lord, use me. But I never said, and what made me, what makes me think that it's going to come in my way, not his way. And the Lord is going to do what he wants to do, period. And regardless of how it is I perceive and or think it's going to all come to be. <sighs> Amen. Oh, love you guys. God bless Nicole. God bless Jody. God bless Carol. God bless Lindsay. Blessings in Jesus name. I love you all. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, soften the hearts of your people, Lord, and, and let them live understanding and knowing that we're going to be used by you, but we're also going to be used by people. And, Lord, we have to be okay with that. To prepare our hearts and our souls and our mindset to be available and ready, no matter what it is and how it is people do. We will remain faithful and focused in and upon you. We will stay focused in and upon the call and the purpose in your plan. And we will, we will remain faithful and obedient to everything and what it is you called us to, Lord. And let us always be reminded, Lord, that when we ask of you to move upon our life and to use us, Lord, that you get to do it in your own way, your own will, not according to how it is I perceive or think it's going to be. So I ask, Lord, that you bless your people in the name of Jesus. I ask that you heal those, Lord, that have been hurt in their soul and in their heart, Lord. I pray that you would touch their soul and touch their heart and touch their mindset, Father, to, 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 to move upon this area within their life, Father. Even as even as I was ministering your word, Lord, and just talking about this topic, Lord, that even in their soul, they said, my God, yeah, you know what? I need to become better. Yeah, you know what? I do need to deal with that. I need to address this because I understand and realize that it's not all about me. It's not about how I perceive. I understand that my life is no longer my own and it belongs to you, Jesus. And you have full reign. You have full control. No matter how it is, no matter what it is, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it is and how it is, I perceive things to be, Lord, have your way in my life. Because I know as long as I'm obedient and, and, and faithful unto everything of what it is you're calling me to, Lord, there shall your grace and your favor and your peace and your blessing continually flow. So, Father, I thank you for your sons and your daughters that tune in today to this word. May this word bless them. May this word encourage them. May it empower them. And, Lord, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those that are easily offended, Lord, Lord, that you would address that situation in their heart, Father, that they would begin to understand, Lord, and put that thing upon the altar and that they would begin to address it and, and realize and understand, Lord, that they need to deal with that so that you can use them more for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen and A to the men. Amen. I love you all. You know I do. Amen. I love you all in Jesus' name. God bless you, Ramona. Blessings. Thank you all so much. Hey, feel free to, feel free to share this. You can share it. You can share it with somebody, with a friend that somebody might need this. Brothers and sisters, we live in a fallen world. And just because a person says they're a minister doesn't mean that they're still not carnal. And it doesn't mean that they don't know. Who, and, 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 it, and, and just because they have a title to their name doesn't mean that they know who they are in Christ. See, because <laughs> I love you all in Jesus name. 
Uh, I could go so much more deeper upon this topic, but let, but hear me, y'all. You never know. You don't know if it's God's hand in this doing this. That's why you can't curse that man or that woman. Because like I said, when Moses came to Pharaoh and he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. The Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So how Pharaoh didn't have a chance. <laughs> Pharaoh didn't have a chance because God hardened his heart. It seems crazy, right? Don't underestimate God. And don't think that you don't think that God won't switch it up on you. Don't think that God's way and God's will and God's plan is going to look way different than you think. Amen. Love you all. Have a beautiful and amazing day. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. I pray that this helps somebody, y'all. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Jody. I pray that this blesses somebody for real. Because if we don't talk about these topics, then ministers that are preaching the word, uh, how many times have you heard of a preacher taking shots from the platform, <laughs> taking shots at, at a congregate or a minister in the church, and you know exactly who they're talking about? Woo! <laughs> that right there, it exposes it all. Come on, y'all. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you haven't seen it, oh, you will. Be blessed in Jesus' name.